That was a great way to wake up this morning. Uh, we ran into a bit of confusion preparing for this general session. Um, John wanted to perform his newest relay song. Um, Joe wanted to sing. Joe actually has a good voice. Um, I requested uh, the honor of singing the original Relay for Life song. It was written by Jack Story in the late 90s out of the South Atlantic Division. And we were forced in a situation of auditioning for the general session committee. You could see what John could do. Joe did a great job. I ran into a bit of a challenge. I can't sing. I only took guitar lessons for about six months. I asked Julie Brickner and Michelle Stoddard from the committee to be like my relay backup dancers. I think that disturbed them more than anything. <laughs> my dream of going on America's Got Talent is crushed. So I, I will save you the pain of me trying to sing a song, and instead I'm just going to tell you a story. I'm going to tell you a story about Relay the Brand. Now I've been relaying for 20 years. I started as a volunteer for seven years before I became a staff person. And there were things that we used to talk about in Relay that became part of our culture, but through time it's been lost. A way of looking at Relay and understanding our brand. So we thought we'd go back with you and visit some of this information and see if it resonates with you. There is no more unique brand than Relay for Life. I don't know how you can explain an event that began with one man and 27 years later is the largest not-for-profit fundraising event in the entire world, the largest event in mankind's history. It's so large. <laughs> the scope of that is so large, it's hard to get your hands around. So how do you explain that? How do you explain that when you see another relayer wearing their t-shirt at a hotel pool, in an airport, in a grocery store, on a college campus, that's like an open invitation for a conversation. How do you explain that people will bring their newborn children to the relay as the first time they show their child to their community? How do you explain people getting married at relay, having their family reunions, planning their entire vacation, summer vacation around Relay for Life? cancer patients, willing themselves to live another two months so they could walk another survivor's lap. How do you explain that when we lose our survivors, they ask for the Relay for Life logo to be engraved on their tombstone? They ask us to lay them in their caskets wearing their Relay for Life t-shirts, wearing their pins, their medals. You know, I was driving around with a Relay for Life vendor in Atlanta, and I'll never forget the day it was pouring rain. And we were talking about different products that we put the Relay for Life logo on. And he mentioned the Relay for Life Afghan. I said, that's a, that's a great product. It's a thick afghan. It always has new creative art on it every year. And I like that. And he said, yeah, you don't understand what I mean. He goes, they're ordering that afghan to be laid out on their coffins in their final service. I don't know of any other brand that can tell you these stories. The question is, why? Why do people tie their self-identity to this badge of honor? What is the Relay brand? Relay is not an event. Relay is a life-changing experience. 
a place where you go where you will experience the full range of human emotions from utter grief and sorrow to incredible joy and laughter, where a survivor will meet another survivor who's had the same cancer and is alive, where a caregiver will find another caregiver and realize they have traveled the same path and have found peace. It is an experience. Relay is tribal, ceremonial, spiritual. As human beings, our ability to survive as a species was based on our ability to work in tribes. We are a social creature. I know at times we pretend not to be, pretend that we don't need other people, but we are a tribe-based animal. We have lived with ceremonies ever since we have gathered in our tribes. It was our way to process and understand the world. We would come and gather. We would celebrate new life, loss of life, crops coming in, famine, mobilizing our community to protect itself. And we have always been spiritual. We have always felt that there was something greater than us that we had a greater cause. At Relay, we gather as the Relay tribe, gathered in common cause to eradicate a disease. And we have our ceremonies to celebrate life, to remember those lost, and to fight back. And we are spiritual, because we are there for a greater purpose not for ourselves, but to eliminate a disease so that no other generation has to face it. What is the Relay brand? It is a brand owned by its customers. It's even customized by its customers. We set these standards up top, very few, very simple. Below that, communities, committees, take their relays and make it reflective of their culture. It becomes theirs. They don't perceive it as corporately owned or corporately driven or coming from somewhere else. It's theirs. And the customer gets to design their experience. They can come to our meetings, they don't come to our meetings. They can come to the relay for 12 to 24 hours and stay the entire time. They can come, they can leave, they can come back. It's up to them how they want to experience this with us. Very unique. Relay is the only brand I've come across that meets all human needs. So bear with me because we're going back to high school and college, a man called Maslow. Maslow believed that all human beings operate off the same basic needs. It's interesting. His theory was this. You have to meet your physical needs first. We need drink, we need food, we need clothing, and we need shelter. And if we don't get that today, folks, we really don't care about much else. But that's not enough because we need to make sure that we get that tomorrow, the week after, the month after, the year after, those security needs, the base of the pyramid. And you're thinking to yourself, well, how does cancer impact that? Cancer has to be the most feared disease. And does it not threaten your daily existence? Think about the story we have all heard in this room. Did you hear Linda got cancer? Linda? No way. She eats great. She exercises all the time. She's young. How did she get cancer? This disease doesn't care how old you are, what your gender is, the color of your skin, your sexual orientation, where you live. It is coming after you. And we all know it, if not consciously, subconsciously. But at Relay, you can walk a track, you can raise money, you can fight back. You can meet those needs to help protect your survival and your family's survival. Is Relay social? 
you guys look social to me last night. <laughs> Self-esteem. Have you not seen how people have grown at Relay? Being on a committee, being a team captain, getting a bronze club sign, it was like you handed somebody a pot of gold. What that made them feel like. And self-actualization, be the most you can be. You, you the people in this room, you are proof of that because you're our current leaders and our future leaders of the relay movement. Now name me another product that can do all of that for someone. I think you'll be hard pressed. But how do you create that experience of relay? Ceremonies. Ceremonies are not about ceremonies. Now well, they are and they're not. I mean, look at it this way. All of you in this room have been to hundreds of ceremonies in your life. If you're like me, you remember next to none of them. I would hate that people coming to our relays would feel that way about our ceremonies. Because our ceremonies are our opportunity to create a personal connection with every relayer. Do they know why they're there? Does anybody explain that this is a worldwide movement to eradicate a disease, that the American Cancer Society is there to support cancer patients and their families? Do they hear the voice and stories of survivors and caregivers so that they can see themselves and the people that are speaking? Do they hear music that touches their soul? Right then and there, you could have them. They would be ours forever. And at our best relays, that's what happens. Games, activities, and on-site fundraising is not about games, activities, and on-site fundraising. Well, it is, but it isn't. All of this provides fun. But if all we do is provide fun, we missed an incredible opportunity. Because each of these areas could create a space where people could bond, tell their story, form relationships. That's critical. There are people in my community that I will not see throughout the year. Hey, I've got four kids. Me and my wife, we run life so crazy, we don't meet half of our friends during the year. But at Relay, we know they'll be there. I've got my Relay buddies, guys that I never see except at Relay. And we will start conversations at 3 a.m. where we stopped the previous year. These are opportunities to build relationships. Doesn't have to be the responsibility of the committee, absolutely not, it's the teams. Have the teams do this for you. Entertainment and music creates the whole tone for an event. A well-run relay, you can feel it in the air, the music just supports it, and at times they'll turn it off for like 15 minutes and it's just like, ah. Oh. And then the music ramps up again and the energy moves. Songs that will make you cry and celebrate and take 500 complete strangers and have them doing the YMCA. Walking the track. Probably one of the most important parts of building the experience and of our brand. But it's also one of the things we've probably strayed away from the most. It is an interesting situation that we are called Relay. Relay for life. Remember, one person, at least one person from every team on the track at all times? Do we ever tell them why? We are there for 12 to 24 hours drawing a line in the sand. 
as a community, we're saying enough is enough. We want cancer ended today, not tomorrow. We will be present. We will honor the people that have battled this disease, and we are going to do something about it. Now, we may not all be there the entire time, but the relay will be, and it provides anyone in the community the opportunity to come. You know, Safeway is open 24 hours. You think they get a lot of business at 3 a.m.? No, but I'll tell you, the guy that just got off work, that finally got his paycheck and can get some food, He's very appreciative of it. I'll never forget the gentleman that walked into one of our relays. It was three in the morning. And I'm just sitting there, just comatose, trying to stay awake, watching people walk the track. And out of the corner of my eye, I see this cowboy walk up. And he's got Levi's on, cowboy boots. And he just puts his hands on his hips. And I hear this, damn, I should have brought a tent. He got it. He was there to walk at 3 a.m. That was the time he could come. For him, that was important. Walking that track is opportunities for relationships, telling your story. But do we value their laps? You know, we should. There are people that will walk 32 miles at a relay because they lost their sister when she was 32. Do we care? They care. We have people that will run 24 hours. My buddy Zach Nguyen ran 24 hours nonstop for at least five years in a row. His record, 104 miles. And he would go to the last minute of the 24-hour clock. And everybody would line the track and just clap and cheer. Because it, it was his way of fighting back. And it was so symbolic and powerful. But we recognized it. You know, lap counting started in Tacoma. The teams can lap count. You can have volunteers lap count. Do we recognize it? Can you imagine how confused new people are when they come to relay? You're a relay, but you're not going to give me a bid, and you don't care how far I walk, but yet every other walking, running, biking event I've been to operates that way. It's got to confuse people. We need to empower this. Overnight. The essence of the Relay for Life brand. Why? As we've all heard in the stories, it represents the battle that a cancer patient faces over 24 hours, that waking up at 3 a.m. and realizing I still have cancer. Or waking up because somebody told you on Friday you have cancer, but Marty, we're not really what type or or how, what we're gonna do to help you with it, or what protocol, but we'll tell you on Monday, and you wake up Friday night, and you're just in a sweat wondering, what is going to happen to me? And you know what? This is not the story of just the survivor going through this. It's the same story for the caregiver, because they're waking up at 3 a.m. too, and they're wondering, what can I do to save my spouse's life? How am I going to support them? Overnight, you know, no one's trying to replicate this out there. Our competition isn't even coming after us. Relay is too unique. Overnight, the zombie hours. My most memorable conversations have been with people at 3 a.m., 4 a.m. Now, somewhere along the line, somebody got this idea that what we're telling us people is that they need to stay awake for 12 to 24 hours with absolutely no sleep. I don't know where that came from. That's a little crazy. Now, if you want to stay up the whole time, great. But you don't have to. We ran into some committees and some focus groups, and they were talking about tired and overnight, and do we really need to go overnight? And I just, you guys don't go to sleep at all? And they looked at me like I was from Mars. No, we, we can't go to sleep. Why not? You don't all have to be awake. Put some people on duty. Know where you need to go if there's an emergency. Rest a bit. Get refreshed. Does everybody on a team have to be awake the entire time? No. Sleep at the field, go home and sleep, come back. 
The point is not about staying awake. The point is it's overnight. We're not shutting down. We owe it to everyone we've lost to draw the line in the sand and say enough's enough. And can we not at least take this moment out of our lives and make a statement? Do we sell this to our donors? Do we tell people what we're doing? You know, the fastest growing events in this country are endurance events. People who want to run marathons do three-day walks. They want to do something memorable. Are we telling our donors we're doing something memorable? Because folks, if we did, instead of $20, they'd give us 40. Why does Relay work? Cancer is the great unifier. At some point in everyone's life, they will be touched by cancer. You are not alone. At Relay, you're with your community. It is a brand that is a gift. How many people have we invited to Relay that, I don't know, but you get them there, they watch that survivor's lap, and they walk up to you, and all they can say is, I get it. And they realize the gift. It is a brand that is so very unique that there's nothing else like it. It creates a sense of identity that we're so proud to say that we're a relayer. Heck, we use relay as a noun, a verb, an adjective, an adverb. We use it for everything. Relay works because it's about survivors and caregivers. These two huge populations of people that need healing and hope. You know, caregivers really started Relay. There wasn't originally a survivor's lap. That came in later in a survivor reception. And caregivers wanted to do something to honor their survivors. And through time, we've tried to make caregivership more important. And there's been this kind of push and pull with it. Because, you know, as the caregivers, we were the ones putting on the party. And now you're coming to us saying that we should be recognized too. But those people need healing and hope, and the survivors will tell you that the caregivers are survivors too. Why does Relay work? It is tangible proof that hope exists. How can you not feel that way when you see 600 survivors walk a track? It allows you to see the very best in people. It is a safe place to tell your story. It is the only place I have seen grown men cry and tell their most intimate stories. It is an event anyone and everyone can participate in. I have seen teams of Down syndrome children. I have seen teams made up of brain injured individuals. I have seen teams of the blind. Now, it was a bit of a challenge because the dogs didn't understand they were supposed to walk in circles and kept carrying their, their masters out into the woods. But once we trained the dogs, it worked. And I'll never forget that team because those individuals were not necessarily used to being with the sighted community and sharing an experience together. It works because it belongs to the American Cancer Society. You do not raise $4 billion. In 27 years, if you're just Relay for Life, Relay does not fund research. Relay does not have programs and services. The American Cancer Society does. And people know that, folks. Who were they writing all the checks out to? When their credit cards are swiped, what's being written up top? Do you honestly think we would have received all those cash donations throughout the history of time if people didn't think it was going to a trusted cause? Relay is the American Cancer Society. Our donors know it. Our participants know it. 
It's the only way to explain the largest fundraising event in the world. Why does Relay work? It's purple. And you're going, purple? Hey, every month we get emails, what's the color purple mean? We know it's important, we're all wearing it. I could not articulate this. I felt it in my soul, I could not put it into words. I was working upstairs in my home office and I was frustrated on this. I went down for lunch and my wife who worked for the Cancer Society for 15 years was working around in the kitchen and she had Oprah Winfrey on. It was one of Oprah's last shows, it was the Wednesday show. Me and Oprah are close because I had had surgery and took Vicodin for three, day, uh, three weeks straight. And my wife caught me watching Oprah one day crying. So I have this personal relationship with Oprah. Um, in some way, we've all been touched. And so uh, I came downstairs and she put the DVR on pause. And uh, she says to me, do you remember Matty Stepanek? I said, yeah, I do remember him. He was this, this young man that was battling a rare form of muscular dystrophy that was going to take his life and he knew it and everyone else knew it and I remember he was about 10 years old and he had written like his fourth book of poetry he was a peace activist he was friends with the Carters and uh, my wife said well he's gone now but his mom's on TV and he did lots of artwork and I said well I didn't know he was an artist and my wife goes yes and you, do you know what his favorite color was purple and his mom just explained what purple meant to Maddie. Maddie believed that purple was the color of hope, that it symbolized everything that we can be, not what happens to us, but what we choose to do with what happens around us. Maddie was talking about relay. He was talking about our action, celebrating, remembering, and fighting back. The color of hope, the color of action, the color of not letting some disease control us, but us gathering to control the disease. So folks, we have a choice. We can run Relay as a gift, and create a meaningful, emotional experience that will improve the quality of lives, provide healing, hope, empowerment, or we can run them as events. Two thousand people are sitting in those stands waiting for opening ceremonies. Native American drummers are sitting up front banging on the drums, sending out a chant across the valley, the chant calling the gathering of the tribe. In that opening ceremony, people will learn about the American Cancer Society, the history of Relay, the international movement to eradicate a disease. They will hear survivors and caregivers in music, they will watch 600 survivors take that opening lap. And when they go to the Luminaria service at night, they will hear the stories from three survivors and three caregivers about the struggles that they've been through. And come the next morning, a gentleman will walk over to a couple of committee members and say thanks. Thanks because he had lost his brother to cancer six months ago but his brother's children did not cry that day. And they didn't cry for six months. But after participating in the ceremony of hope, the Luminaria ceremony, they went back to the tent and they cried for the first time. And he said, thanks, because now I know they'll be okay. My name's Marty Coelho. I work for the American Cancer Society. And I'm a relayer. Thanks. <laughs>